If the power race was the hallmark of the 1960s, then Ralph Nader's stirrings of consumerism were to be a hallmark of the 1970s. By then, both the public and the car manufacturers had realised that they would have to completely rethink their ideas on the motor car and what it was to be allowed to do. race reached its peak at the turn of the decade. In Australia, for example, the big two, Ford and General Motors, were locked in a battle that was typical of what was happening right around the world. There, the focus was on the Bathurst 500, Australia's premier motor race. In 1969, a Holden Monaro like this took first place with a massive 327 cubic inch V8, So Ford went even bigger in 1970 and won with a 351 cubic inch engine. Few paid any attention to what that sort of power was going to mean environmentally or from a safety point of view on the roads. All everyone was interested in was winning. The result was that they were, both of them, incredible cars to drive, provided that all the circumstances were right, which means, of course, only on a racetrack. The problem here, of course, was that large and or highly developed engines were not being confined to the racetracks. And it didn't matter much whether they came from America, who made very big, powerful engines, or Europe, who made small but equally powerful engines, because each of them, each type of engine, was using up natural resources like it was going out of style, and they were essentially unclean. And, of course, most of the power was unusable. Despite that, motorists were still being convinced that the sporting side of motoring, the fun side of motoring, was all important. <laughs> 